how many layers are always 2D? But they, they should be 3D. How are we going to do that? We know now. All of Harmony's layers are two-dimensional cards that exist within a three-dimensional space. But I want my layers to curve and bend. But unfortunately, that's just impossible. The layers can't do that. So I went and just made them do that anyway. Make an empty layer, select the rectangle tool, and in tool properties, activate grid snapping, and down at the bottom there, the fill with color tool. Make sure the inside and outlines are different colors though. Activate the grid in the camera view and make a rectangle the exact size of the stage. Select the line tool, and with the grid snapping still turned on, trace down each line of the grid, making 32 evenly spaced slats. I need 32 lines, but the field chart only goes to 12 either side. Never mind, the grid still continues to snap to it. I'm gonna go all the way out so that I reach 32. Grab all of those lines and then compress them down so that they all fit snugly within that rectangle. Zooming into a subatomic level on this left one to make sure that everything will be lined up perfectly with the edges. Same thing with stretching it on the right. Select everything with the black arrow and in tool properties, press the flatten button to crush the outlines in the colored rectangle together. Notice now, after flattening, I can pick up each one of these green panels one at a time. However, it's not truly flattened yet. As you'll notice, if I remove one of these black lines and then select a panel, it seems to have re-merged itself again. Kind of weird. We need a way to tell the program to solidify this change that we want them to be separate panels permanently. So I need to select each one of these panels and give it a little shift to the left and a shift to the right and that will break it and permanently make it its own thing. To further solidify this change, you've noticed I've colored every second panel blue so I can very clearly see with my own eyes where each one starts and stops. After everything has been nudged with the black arrow tool selected in tool properties, I can select this red arrow here for select by color, grab all of the lines with it, delete them all, leaving only the slats behind. And because we've now separated them all correctly, I can select all of them with the regular black arrow and press this button here. This is distribute to layers. It will take every vector shape and put it onto its own layer. It's wonderful once they have been distributed because all of these layers will be in order. Notice me checking them all through just to be certain that is the case, and yes, they are. The layers are set up, so now it's time to no doubt. It's a bit of a brute forcey method, can be a bit grindy at times because most steps we're gonna be doing, we have to do basically 32 times. We are essentially building a cylinder polygon by polygon. Select all of the nodes and press this button with the little down arrow to spread them all out. But then maybe do a little bit of manual tidy up, laying them all flat like this. So our first round through each string, go into the node library and grab an apply peg transformation. Drag that up and slot it into the first thread between the drawing and the composite and do that 32 times. We're gonna be getting pegs next and putting a peg into the left hand port of each one of those. The apply peg transformation is very fascinating because it allows us to put pegs in from underneath a drawing rather than on top of it. This is the grindiest part, buckle up. I'm gonna go up to the advanced animation tools right up here, right click and select advanced animation if it's not already there and choose the rotation tool. From this left peg, I'm gonna pick up the pivot and put it approximately to the left of this panel. I'm gonna go to the next one put it approximately to the left of that panel and work all the way across. It'll be a good habit to like double check as you go. Like I'll, I'll tend to go one previous and then forwards forwards just to make sure that I'm not accidentally skipping any, that I'm not accidentally doing any of them twice. Uh, if I fall off sync, then it's gonna be a huge pain to, to resync all of these because there's no way to just automatically do it. Once that's done, it's time to refine. Zoom right in, like all the way in to a subatomic level, moving that pivot to exactly on the very, very edge. Unfortunately, there is no way to snap the pivot directly to the side here. So the only way I can really be guaranteed to do it is to eyeball it at a subatomic level. And then zoom all the way up, move over to the next one, zoom all the way back in, line it perfectly up. This took a little while, it actually took a real while because I accidentally did it on the drawing layers itself before realizing that I needed to do it on the peg layers below them. Please don't make the same mistake I did. At last, when that's finally done, give it a double check, this is important. And then one more quick grind through, selecting each one 
and activating this switch in layer properties, enable 3D. This will allow us to move the layers in three dimensional space. When they're all done, I can select all of these pegs and because just the pegs are selected, not the drawings, not anything else, and they all have pivots in unique positions, when I go to rotate these panels, the same calculation will be applied to all of them. So next, I want to parent it all so that each one will be multiplied by the one that came before it. That's done by daisy chaining them. I'm gonna connect them all, working from the left all the way down to the right, connecting them up like this. Have a look at how this daisy chaining will go. Selecting this first one, I rotate this like a little door swing. Having two connected, slightly bigger door swing. Three connected, it's slightly even bigger door swing. And now with all of them connected, if I pick up just this first peg, the entire collection of panels will swing together. If I select any of them working down the chain, it will swing everything from that point onwards. So when I select all of the pegs now and start to rotate them, ah, we get the bending layer cylinder effect that I was speaking of. Interestingly, you can see what the other dimensions do as well. Spiraling across the X axis or the Z axis creates some quite remarkable patterns. Of course, the Y axis is the one that we're after. This is just a test for the time being. We're all done, so I'll undo that and get it all back to how it should be. So now to set it up to make this thing a master. So any drawing that gets plugged into it will automatically become bendable. We will do that by turning this entire thing into a mask. We need to get a whole bunch of cutter nodes that have been inverted by double clicking on the mask symbol in the corner and pop them into every single thread going through their left port. This will tell whatever layer we feed through it to only show where our drawing and the slot in question intersect. Next, bring it a composite. And from the bottom of this composite, plug it into the right hand port of every cutter there is. We can try it out now by placing a drawing layer into the composite and do a little scribble. If I keep the drawing view open to the side of the camera here, I can draw straight onto a flat plane and see that affected in real time onto the round cylinder. Furthermore, if I peg this thing and then animate it around, I can slide elements around the cylinder in real time too. So there's two main points of control, the cylinder itself and the things projected onto it. Finally, this huge composite on the very bottom here, select the yellow box on the side of that and change it from bitmap to pass through. This will confirm to the program that it needs to be a three dimensional cylinder and not something compressed in 2D. Notice here how it is layered with a character. In bitmap, the entire thing will always be shown in front or behind, but as a pass through, we can put a character straight into the middle. So this last part is optional and, and that is linking the movement of all the slats together so it's always a seamless bend. In the X sheet window, press this button to create a new column, choose Bezier curve and name it cylinder bend. On the first slat, selecting this peg and in layer properties under the rotation category, switch this checkbox over to Euler angles. Very important. This separates X, Y and Z into its own tweenable measurements. In this case, we want the Y axis. Select the drop down next to it and we'll find that new Bezier we created under unconnected cylinder bend. Finally, grind through all the layers just one last time, connecting the Z rotation to the cylinder bend. Now it will be located under connected slat one or whatever you've named it. What this does is now the slats share the same rotation information and will always move together. By pressing any individual slat, you can bend them all. Because each panel is multiplied by the one before it, to figure out the amount of rotation we need to create a perfect cylinder, simply 360 degrees divided by the 32 panels, giving us 11.25 degrees, punching that into the Y parameter and bam, it all fits up perfectly. Before we do any actual animation with this thing, we need to increase the exposure of each panel. Down here on the timeline, I will select them all and press Command 4. This brings up a dialog box. I'm gonna pump in like 900 or something. So it will just always be shown down the timeline no matter what. And we hopefully won't have to worry about it ever again. At the very top of the chain, place another peg. This will act as our cylinder master. Enable 3D on this one as well. And now when we start doing any transformations to it, it will manipulate it around as if it's just a three-dimensional shape. 
Select this entire contraption now, except for the inserted drawing and press Command or Control G to group it all and save it for later reuse. On the outside of the group now, underneath the whole contraption, I'm gonna make just one more peg and name it Remote Control. And in its layer properties, enable 3D and once again, activate Euler Angles. And in the dropdown, connect it up to the same Bezier parameter as all of the others. So then we can just select this peg and although it's not physically connected to anything, its number still references back to the same one that the cylinder uses. So I can control its rotation from all the way out here. A handy tool to have in your library. Remember though that whatever you throw into this thing is going to be duplicated 32 times and thus is 32 times heavier on the render engine. So be careful when loading it up. Pieces of scenery and stuff is great, but an entire cast of densely rigged characters <laughs> might slow things down a little. Interesting, isn't it, how the, the theory behind this is relatively simple. Just a whole lot of masks daisy-chained off of each other. But it is quite a time-consuming build. As you can see, there's a lot of parts involved, and it's, a, again, a bit of a grindy one. So if you just want the finished product to put into your projects, the working files from every episode of No Doubt is available to my Patreon supporters. If you're able to contribute, not only will you get these cool tools to be able to use for yourself and be able to reverse engineer them to figure out new ways of making cool stuff, you'll be directly keeping this channel afloat. And that would be wonderful. Thank you. In the next episode of No Doubt, we're gonna get into a little bit more node theory and explain some of the components that causes these different blocks to actually do their thing. It's a bit of a revelation because you'll realize that with just a few simple blocks, you can make pretty much anything that your imagination desires. I hope to see you then.